Hi, welcome to computershopvideo.com. Today we're going to be doing a complete reload of this HP Pavilion 752N. What we're going to be doing is reloading Windows XP Home. Now, to do this, you're going to need a Windows XP Home disk. The Windows XP Home disk is going to be required to actually start your computer and begin the installation process as well as to put all the actual data files on the computer to perform the complete installation. You will also need a Windows XP Home code. This code is necessary in order to uh, authenticate or to finalize the installation. Microsoft Windows will not allow you to use it without having the correct code installed. Now if you bought a retail copy, it comes in a nice pretty box. Uh, this has Windows XP Home on it. Uh, this code will be inside of a jacket. If you've already got a system that you're reloading and you have the original installation disk or have borrowed this from someone, it really doesn't matter. You just need that code. Um, the code may be on the side of the computer. The Windows XP code is going to look very similar to this. They do vary from machine to machine, but the general idea is the same. It's a 25-digit code, and it will be affixed to the side of the computer, the top of the computer, or to the rear of the computer. You'll want to write this code down for reference when you're actually going through the installation process. Let's get started. Now we've got the computer hooked up to the monitor, the keyboard, and the mouse. And at this point, we're actually going to power the computer on and insert the disk. You'll notice that in this case, the customer already has Windows XP home loaded on their computer. We'll need to start the computer from the actual CD, so we're going to power the computer off again. That is accomplished on most systems by simply holding down the button for about four seconds. Now we're going to power back on. Each computer system is a little bit different, and most of them will have a key that you need to press when starting up in order to start off the CD-ROM. Some of them, however, will automatically start off the CD-ROM. Each computer is different. Pressing Escape will show a screen which allows us to select which drive we want to boot from. The internal drive, removable drives, hard drives, even boot off the network. In this case, we actually just want to boot off the CD-ROM that we just stuck in the CD-ROM drive. You'll notice that the screen says press any key to boot from CD. Just press the space bar and the setup process will begin. This process will actually take several minutes. The next screen you're going to see is going to be called the Welcome to Setup screen. This is where you begin the actual process of installing Windows XP Home. First thing you want to do is press Enter. An agreement is posted on the screen, which will be required to press F8 in order to pass. So press F8. Now, if you're reinstalling a computer, you may be presented with this option. Windows XP is saying, I've found a previous installation of Windows. Do you want to repair this installation? In this case, we're not going to be doing a repair. We're actually going to be doing a complete reinstall. So, down at the bottom of the screen, there are options. F3 is to quit. R is to repair. Escape, don't repair. So, in this case, we'll press Escape. Now we see several partitions. This is very important because many systems have divided their hard drives up into different areas. Those areas are called partitions. In this case, HP has divided the hard drive into two partitions. One is called D. That's what you would find to be your D drive when you start Windows. One is called C. That's what you would find to be your C drive when you start Windows. On most systems, it's important to make sure that you delete any existing partitions before continuing. In order to delete the partitions, you'll want to press D on each partition, then L to confirm, move to the next partition by pressing down, press D again, and this time it's saying you're going to delete a system partition, meaning that Windows was installed on this partition at one point. Are you sure you want to do this? Press enter to continue. So we press enter. And then it asks for our final confirmation of L. So we press L. Now the hard drive has nothing on it. All partitions have been deleted. 
we're ready to install Windows XP Home with a fresh installation. So we're going to press enter. Okay, what you see now is an option to choose how you want to format your hard drive. This gives you the chance to format the hard drive with a quick format or a long format. Now honestly, I don't know anybody who would want to wait longer than they need to, uh, although there may be technical reasons why doing a long format uh, is beneficial to the hard drive, but in most cases, I would say 99% of cases, doing the quick format is the quickest and best option. So in this case, we're going to actually move the select bar up to the quick format option, and we're going to press enter. At this point, the installation process begins copying files from the CD onto the hard drive. Now this process will also take several minutes. Okay, we're almost to the process of copying all the files to the hard drive for Windows to install. At this point, it'll be necessary for the computer to restart in order to finish the installation. So you can either press enter to go ahead and restart it manually, or you can wait for the red progress bar to reach the right side. The computer will then restart by itself. You are presented with five different indicators on the left hand side of the screen. These progress bullets will give you an idea of how far along you are in the actual installation process. Below that, you'll find a little green status bar, which gives you a status of how far along uh, sub-processes are. For instance, at this point, it's registering components. That is just one of the parts of the installing Windows process. That green status bar will let you know how far along you are in that part of the installation process. If this status bar hangs for a long time, and what, by long time I would refer to time periods in, in excess of probably 15 minutes. If it stays in the exact same place for more than 15 minutes, it may be necessary to restart your system and let the installation attempt try again. And if it fails again, there's more than likely a hardware problem with your system. Okay, now you'll see the Windows XP Home Edition setup dialog boxes. Uh, begin to pop up. At this point we're still in the process of installing Windows and uh, at this point it wants us to select regional and language options. They want to know where we're at, what language we want the system to go to. Generally if this is an American system um, you're not going to change any of this. Uh, if, you are, if you've got a foreign distribution of Windows XP it will also generally be preset up for your particular area. But if not you can change all your currency types and, and language preference options and things like that uh, in these screens. For us, we're not going to need to do that, so we're just going to click Next. And at this point, we're going to need to enter in the name of the owner or user of the system and the organization. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to enter in Windows user and leave the organization blank. And now comes the moment of truth the point where you'll need to enter your product key found inside of your either your retail packaging uh, box or on the side of your system if you're doing a reload from a system that already had Windows XP home on it. So we're going to go ahead and enter in our product key that's all located on the side of our HP system here. Be sure that you type it correctly. If you don't, it will not allow you to proceed. It will make you re-enter it until it is entered correctly. This error message indicates that I've typed one or more of the letters improperly. Oftentimes you'll find that a B has been mistaken for an 8, uh, 8 for a B. The letters in the product code are actually designed to promote mistypes. It's a way of Microsoft helping people from jotting down codes and taking it home and activating it on their own system. So we're going to go ahead and click next to proceed after entering in our product code. We're going to name the computer if you have a home network. 
You may have different names for your computers. For instance, Bob's computer, Fred's computer, Jen's computer. On this one here, we're just going to call it Desktop 1. The name can be any name composed of alphanumeric characters, meaning A, th a through uh, Z and a 1 through 0, also dashes. This is a required step in the installation of Windows XP. Um, because a lot of systems still use dial-up modems, you'll need to enter in some basic information here. For instance, your area code. So we're going to go ahead and do that. If you have to dial a number to get out, you type it here. And you'll select your tone or pulse dialing here, type of line you have for doing dial-up. If you don't, forget about all that and just put in your area code here. Here you'll want to make sure all your date time settings are right. Make sure you've got the right day, date. Uh, make sure you've got the right time. This is actually going to set the time in the computer. And make sure you pick the right time zone. This is important because uh, your time will show way off if it is not the right time zone. In our case, we're central time zone. So we're going to click over here to central time and tell it to go ahead and automatically adjust time for daylight savings time. And then we're going to go ahead and click next. Now Windows XP has the information it needs to finish up this stage of the installation process. So the next thing we'll do is just wait for a while. Okay, Windows has just moved into the finalizing the installation process. At this point, you'll note that the computer is actually going to restart once again and begin the boot process. You're now going to boot into Windows XP for the first time. Windows XP is actually installed at this point so you can remove the disk from the disk drive. Microsoft Windows has presented us with an interesting dialog box. It's saying it's going to change the appearance of visual elements. It's going to improve the appearance of visual elements automatically. It's doing this because there's a piece of software on your system that's missing. We'll add that in just a short while. So for now, we'll click OK. And the process a booting will continue. You'll notice that in this case here the colors of the Windows logo are just a little bit off. Again, that has to do with the fact that there's actually a missing piece of software called a video driver which we're going to have to download from HP's website in order to install later. Windows has presented that your computer might be at risk because the computer has just been reloaded with Windows XP and there is no extra software installed just yet. We're going to go ahead and click off of these various balloons that pop up and now we'll visit another computer where we'll download the drivers that will be required to make this HP work properly. Now to download software drivers for your system, for instance the video driver that uh, we need for this system, you're going to want to come to support.hp.com. So, uh, HP actually has a pretty good site for locating drivers, software drivers uh, for their products. Uh, what you'll do is you'll arrive at support.hp.com, it'll redirect you to this page. Uh, you're going to want to click Support and Drivers. Click on Download Drivers and Software, and you're going to type in what model computer you have, Pavilion 752N. We're going to go ahead and click the little arrow on the side. Agree to Microsoft's little pop-up there. And uh, we're going to click on Windows XP because that's what we're installing. And what it's going to do is it's going to prevent, present a list of different pieces of software that HP recommends you install in your system. A lot of this you can install later on if you want to. You don't necessarily have to put it in there right away. But one thing we're definitely needing is the uh, Intel graphics driver. That's what's going to make all the colors work right, make you be able to set your screen settings the way they need to be in order to work properly. There may be other drivers that you want to download and install kind of at your discretion, but that's one we're definitely going to have to have. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on that. We're going to scroll down to download only. And what we'll want to do is save that onto a like a little flash drive or something like that. Something that allows you to transport it over to the computer you're working on. Okay, now that we have our drivers, we're going to take our little USB drive and we're going to plug it into the system and let Windows recognize it. After a short while, Windows will have recognized the new flash drive and it will pop up with a dialog box asking you what you want to do. We want to open the folder 
And inside here, we're going to see various different files. We're actually going to look for the one we just downloaded, which is this one here. I'm going to resize things here a bit. I'm going to drag it onto the desktop of the system, let it copy. This is the icon of the file we downloaded, so I'm going to double click that. And this will walk us through the process of actually installing the video driver for the system. It'll make everything look pretty again. I'm going to accept the terms of the license agreement. Click Next. And this part is pretty much automated. It's going to ask us, do we want to install? Yes, we do. The screen flashing is normal. You'll see that happen as it actually applies the settings. and it wants to know if we can restart the computer. So we're going to go ahead and click yes and we're going to wait for the system to restart. During the meantime we can go ahead and pull our flash drive out. Okay, one of the things, first things you should notice is that the colors will be, be actually right in the actual Windows logo as it's booting up. That's because our video driver is installed and the colors will act as they should. The system will continue through its normal boot up process Everything's looking much better now. Now the system looks like you would expect it to look. Now, the next step will be to make sure that there aren't any other missing software drivers. We've installed the video driver, but let's see if we need to install any more. We're going to right click on my computer in the start menu. We're going to move down to manage and click that. Okay. Now at this point you'll need to click on the device manager. Once the device manager is selected, you'll see all of the devices installed in the system on the right hand side. If any of these has a yellow exclamation mark or flag on them, then that simply means that you'll need to go to the manufacturers, in this case it would be HP's website, and download the appropriate driver for say, you know, a sound, sound driver, audio driver, uh, maybe network driver, that type of thing. Um, you'd have to download it and run the installation just exactly like you did with the video driver. Um, just letting you know for various different models it'll be a little bit different. But that's for general use, but in this case um, all of them are already installed. The only one that was missing was the actual video driver. So that wraps up the actual setup of Windows XP. If you want to customize the desktop a little bit you can add the standard uh, computer icons, network icon, my folder icons, by simply right clicking on the desktop, going to properties and clicking on desktop tab, clicking customize desktop and what you'll see is there are several select boxes. You can select my documents, you can select my computer, my network places and Internet Explorer. You can tell those all appear on the desktop. Also you may want to turn on this run desktop cleanup wizard every 60 days because um, it's pretty much just annoying. It's a useless feature. You click OK. There you see all the standard icons on the side of the screen now. My Documents, Recycle Bin, My Computer, My Network Places, Internet Explorer. The last thing to do is to actually activate Windows. Now to activate Windows, what you're going to need to do is click on down the lower right hand corner this little set of keys. And when I hover over it's telling me I have 30 days left for activation. Just double click on that. You'll get a Let's Activate Windows screen with several different options here. We want to pick the first option which is let's activate Windows over the Internet which is a good time to point out that you'll want to make sure that you already have your computer plugged into your uh, broadband connection or if you had dial-up um, you'd have to use your ISP's dial-up uh, configuration before you attempt to do this activation because it has to actually talk across the Internet to activate Windows. So we're going to say go ahead and let's activate Windows over the Internet now. We're going to click Next you want to register with Microsoft? No, unless you feel like wasting your time. And in just a minute, we will get back a response saying whether Windows activated successfully or not. And it says, thank you. You have successfully activated your copy of Windows. So click OK. You're back at the desktop. And that's it. Your computer is now reloaded with Windows XP Home and ready for use. So if you're able to hang in there through all that, we managed to... Uh, wipe out partitions, get rid of anything that was already existing on the computer, 
uh, we managed to go ahead and copy all the files onto the system and uh, let's see we put in our configuration information uh, product key from the side of the machine in this case on the uh, HP Pavilion 752 and already came with, with Windows XP Home so we had a product key uh, again if you're loading a system that did not have uh, Windows XP Home on it and you bought a retail copy the key is going to be inside the package um, so we go, went ahead and loaded that put on the configuration information in um, booted the computer and lo and behold missing video driver uh, we downloaded that from HP support site for this particular model um, once that was loaded, we were able to check the devices, make sure that nothing else was missing. The computer had all the software it needed to work properly. And then finally we went and activated Windows. So at this point, if you had viruses before, they're gone. Uh, save a bunch of technicalities on boot sector viruses and things like that. The majority of viruses would not be a problem at this point because your computer is completely wiped. Um, you're starting fresh. There is no data saved. So if you want to look at uh, the other video on how to save data before doing a reload, uh, I'd encourage you to check that out because if you do have important information on your system, you're going to want to back that up ahead of time. Aside from that, enjoy your computer. Thanks for watching.